And today we have Casey E. Lewis with us. Hello, Casey. Hello. Casey, thank you for joining us. Um, Thanks for having me. We're really excited to dive in to some really huge things with you. Um, But before we do, uh, we want to kind of get to know you a little bit better, just on a a non-film world level. Um, So can you tell us something unique, uh, fun, interesting um, about yourself, maybe a special skill uh, or just something cool um, just about you? Well, it it is film related in that it came from a fascination with a film and uh, a, a character in particular. I'm of the age where, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I was young when Indiana Jones uh, first hit the screen, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and I was really I, I love I, I loved Harrison Ford, like like so many uh, uh, people did do, but. I um I was I was obsessed with uh, with that character and actually learned how to pop a bullwhip um uh because of that fascination. I would be out in my in my side yard. I grew up in Texas, be out in my side yard just learning how to crack this bullwhip and uh you know lash it on a tree limb and knock things off of uh uh stuff you know like plastic cups i'd put it out on a big you know stick or whatever and it's pop them off and uh it was it was really wild i wonder what my neighbors thought of me in (laughs) suburbia uh texas uh uh, out there with a bullwhip cracking it very loud but uh, (laughs) that's not something too that's something that not too many people know that, I don't think that's something too many people can do. That's really impressive. <laughs> how uh, how long did it take before you really nailed it and had it down? Um, I don't remember exactly how long it took, but I I do remember I had a a, a rather wide eyed, wide mouthed expression when I uh, when I knocked off a, a plastic cup off of a, a, a steak. It was um, uh, for the first time. It was. Uh, it's kind of uh, shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that's really cool. Um, and I can imagine if your if your neighbors, you know, were also into film, which I like to think everybody <laughs> is to a degree. Maybe they were super into that movie too and understood, and they were like, "No, this is we get it." Yeah, I mean uh, Harrison Ford. <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, it, we have we have Facebook, so I guess I could reach out to those the, those uh, former neighbors and say. <laughs> You remember those weird <laughs> afternoons? Absolutely. Well, um, diving in a little bit to you know the exciting things that we are here to talk to you about. Mm-hmm. Um, you have a a big part here in Minnesota when it comes to SAG AFTRA. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about that? Um, mm-hmm. Maybe just start with uh, you know how did you even get involved here in Minnesota with them? Yeah. Um, I, uh, I lived in the twin cities from the mid nineties to, uh, 2002. Uh, and, uh, my wife and I, um, we were planning to move to Los Angeles because we were, um, she was, uh, an actor. She still is an actor, but she was more involved in it at the time. Um, we, uh, we thought, you know, if we're going to do this, we need to do it uh, now at the age we are before, you know, it just, it just becomes, you know, pointless. So we moved out to Los Angeles. I was a member of Actors Equity at the time. I became a member of SAG-AFTRA out there and was a member of SAG-AFTRA the entire 15 years we'd be there, but never, never really. I mean, I would go to meetings and such and, um, uh, you know, I was a voting member. I didn't, I didn't blow that stuff off. I took that seriously. Um, uh, but I never really, uh, got involved in the actual, um, organizing or, um, uh, volunteering, you know, for office or anything like that, just because there were so many people out there doing it and still are. And when we came back to the twin cities, um, it was, you know, different for me because, you know, now I was, you know, a SAG after member and I thought, well, uh, let's see what they're, let's see what they're doing here. Um, you know, it's SAG after twin cities, local, they represent all of Minnesota, North Dakota and South Dakota. And so we went to a membership meeting that was, you know, an open meeting for for everybody, uh, including the board, but any member who wanted to come. And, you know, just sitting around a table talking about stuff and, you know, a subject came up and I said, I thought, uh, well, wow, it sounds like they need to do 
kind of this, this, and this, and then just kind of voiced it. And, and one of the board members at the time looked down the table at me and said, that's a, those, those are great ideas. Um, you, you should do that. And I just kind of looked at her and said, well, this is my first meeting. I just I just showed up to see what was going on. And it was from that point on that it just kind of slowly snowballed to my involvement. But that first uh, that first meeting was when um, Philip Gilpin of uh, Catalyst had uh, come to the the board meeting to talk to folks and say, hey, you know, we'd really like you guys to, to partner with us. And I was very quick to say, OK, well, it sounds like, you know, A, B, C and D. And uh, from that point on, I was working with uh, Philip and and the board because I wasn't on the board at the time. And um, that became uh, SAG after Twin Cities local partnership with uh, with Catalyst and uh, resulted in the uh, film festivals committee, which I became the chair of. And not long after that, I was uh, I joined the board um, actually right before the pandemic right before things started closing down, I, I, uh, I, I joined the SAG after Twin Cities local board and, and, the, you know, then all hell broke loose and the world came crashing down. <laughs> but that was weird because what, what, how, the, what morphed into the next involvement was the tax incentive work. Um, uh, yes. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, uh, a strange time because, um, uh, uh Melody Bayhan at uh, Minnesota Film and TV had uh, they were introducing a bill at the time, um, but everything you know since the world was falling apart, legislators had more serious things to to focus on. And then, um, uh, still in the pandemic, when 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 they when they came back and could focus on other things, uh, we reintroduced the uh, the the tax credit, um, but. Uh, because of the pandemic, there was so little going on. You know, this this out of work actor um, had a project, and um, uh, myself and another board member, uh, Mark Bradley, and our uh, our the, the staff who uh, helps us in this area, based out of Chicago, uh, Bill Hendrickson, um, we became this team and 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 started organizing, um, reaching out to uh, labor uh, unions and, and leaders. And, uh, we, um, were able to build a statewide union coalition and get, uh, uh, get, uh, get the assistance of the, uh, Minnesota AFL-CIO. And, um, yeah. And then we just, then we just kept organizing and strategizing, meeting with, uh, legislators and committee chairs and, um, working with the, the core team, which included Melody and, and some other folks and the, and the uh, lobbyists that we were working with or still are working with. And, um, and, uh, and yeah, we made, we made it happen. AFL CIO. What's that? Oh God, that's an acronym that you had to ask me about. Um, I mean, what uh, is it? I mean, like, well, what does it, it is, do? it, it is, um, at one time they were separate organizations. They joined forces and they basically, um, are, uh, American labor across the, across, well, you know, obviously across the United States, but, um, they are, uh, an umbrella organization for so many other unions mm. and labor groups, uh, be it carpenters, pipe fitters, electricians, um, drivers, train engineers, um, uh, actors. <laughs> SAG-AFTRA, uh, are, uh, we are a member of the, uh, uh, the AFL-CIO. Um, and they essentially look out for workers in America uh, for, uh, fair wages and, uh, working conditions. Mm -hmm. Um, um, but, uh, they are, I, I have, I learned very quickly when we were working on the tax incentive that nobody organizes like labor. Um, and, uh, if, if a brother or sister comes to another, uh, brother or sister who is not necessarily there, um, within their trade, they are quick to say, you know, if, if it's a labor issue, we are in support of it. We will help you. Um, uh, cause they were very quick to respond to our interest in wanting to get a, uh, a tax credit in Minnesota for film and television production. And they, they joined on like that. Um, and because they understood that, well, one, it was good for our members, but it was also good for their members because of, um, 
what outside production can bring to uh, state, local, rural areas when a film production comes to town. It's like an army camp coming to town and they need food, they need lodging, they need transportation, they need uh, dry cleaning, they need carpenters. Exactly. They need carpenters. Sets. Yeah. You know, they need and they need materials. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so, yeah, they were they were very quick to understand um, this. This this is good for Minnesota. This is good for labor. This is good for workers. Yeah. I just watched uh, behind the scenes of a recent film called Smile. It's a horror film. Uh, but a lot of the scenes take place in a hospital. And if Mm -hmm. you know anything about the last two years, it's hard to work in a hospital these days. So they had to build a set very quickly and Mm -hmm. with a lot of like, obviously labor to do that. So um, to stage a hospital type scene that isn't in a hospital. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was kind of my, that was kind of my road uh, from, from SAG after to, uh, to the, to the tax incentive. Yeah. So for those who don't know much about you, Casey, what's before we get further down into the tax incentive and everything, uh, what's, what's some of your background? Where are, are, are you originally an actor or originally what, what was your, your yeah, trade? I'm, I'm an actor. Uh, I grew up in Texas, got my undergraduate in, uh, uh, central Texas, went to grad school in Louisiana, uh, uh, LSU, uh, went back to Texas after graduating, maybe, six months and but but uh in between my second and third year in grad school um uh my mom uh had found an article in the uh dallas paper about um about theater in the twin cities and um i'd never <laughs> heard of minneapolis or st paul oh. and um i was you know at a point thinking okay w- what am i going to do after graduation i was thinking mm-hmm. about seattle and then that third year of grad school pretty much anybody and everybody I I could uh, talk to about, uh, about the twin cities, I would say, what what do you know about it? And it became a decision for me between uh, Seattle and, and, uh, and the twin cities. And I opted to go to the twin cities after graduation. So, uh, you know, not long after grad school, moved up here ridiculously, stupidly in the middle of winter. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Nuts. Texas boy, coming to uh uh, minnesota in the middle of winter and um uh you know did did the actor thing here as a a non-union performer did the actor thing here for gosh about nine years i guess it was um got a got a touring job with the guthrie uh not long before we left in uh 2002 and um and uh, and then we and then we went to california was there 15 years still still primarily an actor and uh came back with the with the interest with with the knowledge that because of because of how the last you know 20 years had gone um with uh the commercial strike the writer strike oh, uh, yeah. all of that uh-huh. stuff and how hard that hit the twin cities um this this market um, uh, I, I knew I would, my main focus would no longer be on, on camera work. It would be on theater work. And, um, you know, I've had, uh, some, some nice theater jobs since, since coming back here, but, you know, I had no idea that, um, uh, I would become involved with SAG-AFTRA and, uh, with the effort to bring more, uh, not just, sag after jobs back to to the market but bring television and film production back to the market for you know jobs for more more people than this uh white banker slash lawyer slash insurance salesman might have the opportunity to get those types of jobs just jobs across the board for so many people but yeah i'm an actor um and i'm an actor who uh uh I guess I would be the first to say I'm shocked as hell that I got involved in labor organizing um, and the effort to, again, you know, get the get the tax credit here as, as, a, as a member of a team. But I, I never thought this um, dopey actor would have would have been involved in anything, anything like that. So, yeah, I'm an actor. Don't forget that. Hire me. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's really interesting seeing how, uh, you know, the careers can sort of um, progress and expand and shift, uh, especially when acting is really that first passion and drive. So yeah. it's really cool that that you kind of moved into seeing the other needs um, and maybe even from your actor position and just seeing what everyone else is doing and what it all entails and and kind of now moving into this uh, phase of, of your career. So it's really awesome um, that you're supporting the state like that. Yeah. Uh, Cause and, I know. And, and, yeah. It's thank you. Thank you. And it's weird too. Cause so many people, because back to the whole uh, commercial strike and writer strike and all that stuff, so many people uh, were forced to make difficult choices, um, mm -hmm. uh, whether to stay in the twin cities, whether to leave, to go to other markets for work, whether to, um, uh, you know, uh, make a difficult choice of becoming, um, uh, you know, a FICOR uh, status, which is, you know, technically a, a, a fee paying non-member um, or just to not join at all. And in coming back to the Twin Cities, um, uh, having being used to being in an environment where there are more opportunities for on camera and voiceover actors, more union opportunities for on camera voiceover actors. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, you know, I looked at my options and I thought, um, um, I, I want to be involved in the union. And then it just, and then it just took off from there again, still not knowing that I would be doing any kind of tax credit work, but, um, yeah, people, people are faced with their choices and, and, you know, God love them and, bless you for, you know, sticking to your choices. And I just found myself at a crossroads where I thought this is what I'm going to do. And, and, and I'm, uh, you know, and that's, and that's what happened. And I'm really happy with the choice that I made. Absolutely. Um, so I, I want to touch on what you were sort of just, uh, mentioning about, you know, union work versus non-union work here mm -hmm. in Minnesota specifically, mm -hmm. um, especially, you know, for for actors that are maybe just getting started and listening, maybe they just don't know how to, where to go to find this information. And in their minds, it might be, well, if you want to be union, if you want to be SAG after, you have to go out to to LA. And like, that's that's their one train of thought, whereas that's not the only option. But understanding the the ratio of you know union and non-union work here can you kind of speak to that a little bit um well uh i know a lot of people who are still in the twin cities um who are still you know plugging away at, at, at being being a, a, a you know a productive um uh contributor to to entertainment here whether it's stage work or or on camera work um, and they've they've stuck it out. So many people have left. So many people have just pulled back and done other things because of uh, the changes again that have happened over the last twenty years. Um, those actors used to be able to make their living um, doing commercials and industrials and the films that came to town and such, and it just became uh, the work dried up. Um, so this area is nowhere near being a union town. Um, it is very difficult to be a union actor in this in this market because of because of that. But things are changing with the passage of the of the tax credit. Work has increased. I've seen the numbers, um, uh, and and it, again, it is changing. But does that mean a non? union or as uh we like to refer to uh to uh, that 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 uh that demographic as a pre-member um uh does that mean they should join uh sag aftra or even equity for that matter and you know that that's a that's a very difficult question an actor has to ask themselves um at th uh, the appropriate time in their career um uh, but as far as being, uh, you know, there's a lot of equity work here. Um, and, and it's great to be an equity actor in this town because, you know, there are a lot of, there, there's still, there's still a lot of equity, uh, houses out there. But when it comes to SAG-AFTRA, 
if I would I would not try to convince a young actor to try to join SAG AFTRA in this town because of where we are in the transition that this market is experiencing. Once um uh once more uh larger budget projects come to town, which will nine times out of ten be a union uh project. Um, once we see a, 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 a more frequency in those types of projects, um, the world's going to change here. Um, and once we get into talking about the tax incentive, you know, we talk about the goals and such and and, and, and our, you know, our, our intention there. But, um, uh, uh, you know, I would not uh, I, I'm in no I'm in no position, nor would I want to start ringing a bell and say, oh, you non-union actors join sag after because it's just that's just ridiculous for because the work is not here yet. Um, but, um, yeah, does that kind of answer your question or? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think it's really helpful context for, for people to know, cause it's, you know, just kind of thinking, focusing on like that one tiny demographic of, of, you know, the actor spectrum here in the, the twin cities or Minnesota in general of, you know, people that are wanting to go into it and really not having a good idea, like just having that, I, that context. So they know, okay, this could be an option at some point right now. It's not the best, you know, fit and that there is still that non-union work here. So it doesn't mean that nothing's happening yeah, for those, for, for, you know, for actors, any actors right now in this market, non-union slash pre-member or, or union actor with with the with the transition that our market is in right now um any anyone considering joining sag aftra by all means find out more about what that means uh the types of work that will no longer be available to you because of the agreement that you've that you that you've made mm -hmm. um but also find out what it would what it what the other side of the fence looks like um you have uh, an organization that whose whose purpose it is to look out for you you're no longer an individual who is solely looking out for themselves there's an organization that that uh, negotiates uh your wages and your working condition uh uh the, um uh they they you have the benefits of uh, you know, after making so much money in a in a year, uh, obtaining benefits. Um, uh, but there, there's, I, I would find out as much about the union as you can. Um, and uh, you know, uh, yeah, just just find out find out what it what it means, demystify it. <laughs> and quite frankly, I've you know, in in communication with um, some of the uh, some of the board members, um. Uh, here at the Twin Cities local, you know, we're looking for opportunities to be able to do that, to, mm -hmm. you know, open, open our arms and and have communication with these, you know, non-member pre-member actors who, who are interested or maybe, you know, you know, give some kind of a side glare going, why would I ever <laughs> want to do that? I'm such a free person to do whatever kind of project I want to, you know, really, really just have a conversation of, um, I totally understand your situation right now, but one day that situation may change. And if it does, yeah. we want, we want you to know he, these are the benefits and this door is open, um, mm -hmm. for you to be a part of this, you know, sisterhood and brotherhood. But, you know, find out about SAG after, but also as an actor, again, in this market that is transitioning um, because of one, we have a tax incentive and two, we are going to grow that tax incentive. Um, uh, study, understand um, that, yes, Minnesota has a tax credit for episodic and film work to try to entice those productions to come to town. That does not mean, and there is a benefit for those producers to hire local actors, mm -hmm. local uh, local crew. Um, uh, but that does not necessarily mean they are going to hire local crew. No, I, I shouldn't say they aren't going to hire a local crew. Let me let me specifically speak to actors, because of the way the world is right now, and self taping and the you know the 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 internet and. Uh, um, 
being able to, you know, in, in the same way that we're having a conversation right now via, um, you know, Zoom, um, people can audition uh, via Zoom. Um, mm-hmm. you can, you can self tape by, you know, shooting your link to, uh, to, you know, to Vimeo and such. Um, and, and there are airplanes and there is travel. Um, so Minnesota actors, even though we have a tax incentive and production coming to the state again, uh, we are not only competing for the roles, uh, uh, actors here competing against one another. For those roles, but we're competing with actors in Georgia, Seattle, Texas, New York, Los Angeles. And what that means for actors here is uh, those are more competitive markets and actors there go out for those jobs continually on a daily, weekly basis. They secure those jobs. They know what it's like working on set. They know what it's like working uh, with uh, uh, directors and writers and 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 casting directors in the casting process. So that having been an actor living in Los Angeles for 15 years and competing in that market, what that tells me as a Minnesota actor is I need to be ready to compete with the likes of people who have 20 co-star credits on their resume and five guest star credits on their resume because that is those are the same people who are submitting a self-tape for the jobs that are being shot here in Minnesota. So Minnesota actors need to, and this may hurt some ears out there, and I'm sorry if it does, but it's the truth. Minnesota actors need to up their game. Um, because again, we're competing with the, the, the man or the woman who has appeared on, you know, multiple Chicago, uh, shows, uh, in Chicago, uh, all of the, the wolf shows are, and, and the people who are doing the Netflix series based in New York or, you know, Albuquerque or, or whatever, we're competing with those people who, who have so many more credits and recent credits than um, uh, Minnesota actors have had the opportunity to audition for, compete for, and secure over the last, you know, 20 years. Right. So like in LA or New York or like Georgia, anything you can obviously see, like they have studio systems set up. So Mm -hmm. They have installed major machines that pump out productions and exactly. the factories. Um, yeah. Yeah. So like even I, when I spent time in LA, I took, you know, stand in jobs for extra cash. Right. So yeah. I, you become SAG eligible by just being in the system. So it's like, yeah. for me, I was not after being an actor, sorry to say, but <laughs> the world missed out, <laughs> but you know, it's just the, uh, that's that's what happens when you're like working you're you show up you do the work and you can become eligible just like that and uh i did work on like an indie from a filmmaker's perspective working on like a web series that went sag um that was very interesting because we did it more like i think it was sag indie is that still a thing i'm not sure Mm -hmm. yeah okay there and there are lots of there are lots of different um there are lots of different low budget opportunities that uh, SAG-AFTRA offers, both if, if it's an animated short, if it's a student film, if it's a budget between this figure and that figure that is intended for streaming use, or if it's intended for festival uh, 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 distribution or, and then you get into the higher budget projects. sag after over the last, oh gosh, I don't know how many years, 10, seven years has made it so easy for, uh, content creators and film workers, a uh, film, film, uh, makers to, um, to utilize, uh, uh, union performers, um, one of the cool things about Catalyst is um, we we take a sheet up there with us and uh, uh, are able to, you know, interact with um, content creators and say, uh, where do, what do you want to do with the with the project when you're 
when you're done, once you've got it and, and you're ready to shop it around, oh, we're going to take it to festivals. Okay, well, uh, this is a great option for you. And we can point to a low budget um, uh, agreement um, with that. But it, they, it, it's just so incredibly simple. And uh, in a lot of these cases, the um, the uh, the the wages are, are negotiable. Um, you're not paying an actor five thousand dollars to work on your your short film or your mm-hmm. indie feature or whatever. It, it's it's so ridiculously easy. Um, but but something that you were saying a second ago, Alan, reminded me of something that I tell actors, which is related to what I was just saying about competing for these roles, training, um, uh, understanding uh, uh, current industry trends as far as headshots, knowing your type, uh, websites. Um, but again, training, training, training um, to be able to compete at that level. Because um, if you go to a more competitive market, uh, it's like being a, a an athlete competing at the Olympics, um, meaning you're training every day. You are ready to. I was not training every day, Casey. Just so yeah. you're aware. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. just sit here where the lights are, and your camera's pointed at where he's going to sit later. So yeah, second team all the way for me. Anyways, right. <laughs> go ahead. But uh, the the point being, um, uh, you know, if you're going to run a race. And you're the person in the lane next to you um, competes at a world level um, on an annual basis. um, And you jog occasionally during the spring and summer um, uh, you to, 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 to be ready to cross that finish line before that person, or even right behind them with, you know, who knows better form or whatever, whatever it's going to take to get the job um, you need to be training um uh at that same at that same level I, i'd say even harder because because we're you know we're behind we're behind the game a little bit here because of the lack of uh, opportunity for so long so that i'll just just buttonhole it with that um training 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 to be ready to compete mm-hmm. um and that's that's a really good uh subject um as well as you know there's there's a lot of good opportunities here for um ongoing different types of of classes or or like coaching and and things like that but um and you know how to do a self tape and and whatever uh but there's definitely been some fluctuation in what we have here um you know with some some people moving and uh you know others trying to focus more on other aspects of their career maybe filmmaking and things like that versus you know having uh, as much time for, for the teaching specifically. Um, but you actually do have an opportunity, uh, that you provide actors when it comes to sort of that across the board. Um, which I think is really great since you have so much perspective and experience, um, you know, in, in the LA market here and, and having that perspective that you were just talking about, um, Mm -hmm. Can you I, uh, speak to that a bit more? Yeah, when I was one of the one of the jobs I had um uh the longest when I was in Los Angeles was working for the SAG Foundation, now the SAG After Foundation. Their support 51C3 uh support um uh service uh uh foundation for members of SAG After. And they offer all kinds of incredible programming, uh screenings, conversations with uh with agents and uh, actors, um, uh, managers, editors, you know, filmmakers across the board, all all with the interest of helping actors do their job better. Um, so being immersed in that in that um, that environment, um, I, I attended their events before I worked for them. I attended their events while I worked with them. I attended their events after I worked with them, and. Um, and as an actor in Los Angeles, um, if you don't know how to focus on yourself as a business with, you know, website, business cards, headshots, resumes, understanding your product as a business and how to promote that product with the tools that actors have available to them, whether it's, again, a website, headshot, resume, demo, um, uh, if you don't know how to do that in a competitive market, you will you will fail. 
um, you you will not work your way up the ladder uh, of accomplishment that you that every actor is striving for in whatever market they're in. And so, you know, there's 15 years of that in Los Angeles, especially uh, with the, the concentration of it while I was at the foundation. But when I was no longer at the foundation, did some re- uh, some, some uh, evaluation of what I wanted to do, and it was still the desire to help actors, um, to uh, uh, offer services to actors. It was primarily at the time self taping, so I was um, I was self taping actors uh, when I was in Los Angeles. I was self taping myself, you know put together some some nice equipment for that and that that business has continued here to the twin cities but i also do coaching and consulting and talk about websites and 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 do websites for actors and do headshots and everything and all with the intent to be more competitive uh um and and really uh capture uh, help the actor market themselves understand themselves as a product and market themselves to the best of their uh, ability. But more recently, I've started teaching. I actually just started a class on Monday night, um, uh, a scene study class um, where we do, uh, well, obviously scene study, but also exercise work with some uh, some uh, techniques, with some influence from uh, a work that I did with a teacher uh, I uh, I worked with in Los Angeles. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's all about, well, one it's it's about becoming, a a, a, a more confident, um, uh, uh, actor, um, understanding yourself, uh, you know, your instrument and being able to, um, take on those, those, uh, those challenges that you might, uh, experience in those more uh, if you're fortunate enough to be given sides to audition for a project where the role is really meaty, you within the classroom scenario have challenged yourself with material and understand yourself as an artist um, to be able to deliver the goods when it comes time to be hired. Um, and so I am all about uh, actor education, whether it's um, how to uh, are, because we're all uh, um, we're all sorry. We missed business. that last part. Could you repeat that? Just kind of uh, uh, under, understanding and promoting marketing the product that we as performers are. Like you know, if you look at me. Uh, uh, um, I have an understanding of my type, you know, I am the, the white guy in a suit. Um, uh, I, you know, I can pull off plaid, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not the farmer. Um, uh, um, an, uh, an actor needs to understand the product that they are perceived by the outside world as being because when you walk into a casting director's office or you virtually engage them um in today's today's world um you need to know you need to understand how they are going to perceive you and it's it's i i in some of the workshops i do and i still have the old headshots to to uh to share with anybody who might want to see it but it's embarrassing um uh one of the first headshots i got in the black and white days um, this photographer convinced me to put on a leather jacket and I had a leather jacket because of the Indiana Jones fascination, um, uh, circling back. Um, but, uh, but this guy, this guy is Richie. This guy is not Fonzie. Um, uh, so when, when I walk in the room for an audition or for a meeting with an agent or a manager, I need to know the product that I'm selling. So in in my communication with them and my representation um uh they know that i know the product that i'm selling because if you go into an agent's office and you're looking for representation and you don't have a good idea of what your product is who you are and the types of roles that you are perceived as being playing because quite frankly you can't escape that um you can want to play these roles and you can work your way up to your career where you can play those types of roles. If you're an actor like, you know, Kate Blanchett or Daniel Day Lewis, um, Edward Norton, but even, even 
to to their degree they there are there are limitations um but uh but as an actor you know a lower or mid-tier actor you're going to be cast as as your type and i'm not talking about type casting type casting is a very negative connotation but but how the type being how you are perceived by those around you and you know again back to that richie versus fonzie um uh comparison i'm not going to walk in a room and somebody is going to look at me and say i see that guy as a tough guy no i see that guy as the the banker or the insurance salesman or the um uh the 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 mid management or the executive uh type person they're not going to put me in a leather jacket out on a on a on a on a on a uh you know a tractor or something i need to i and i need to understand that so i can successfully through my headshots market that product as um you know find your niche uh, your niche and then and then be able to uh, uh, promote that through your marketing materials again headshot resume website uh, your believable types and if you go to a competitive market if you go to Los Angeles if you go to New York uh, I would I would venture to say that they're even doing it in Atlanta um you can go to workshops and and learn how to un- understand the importance of type because casting directors are uh, if you're lucky to in in those markets, they they offer different types of workshops that you can go to, and casting directors will be there, and you can have FaceTime with a casting director with a series of other actors and read for them, and you'll show them their your headshot and your resume, and they'll you know evaluate that. You'll read for them, and they'll give you some direction. Maybe you'll get to do it again or whatever. But you know, and and one of those the opportunity there as far as the headshots go is they can tell you whether or not you are successfully selling yourself, representing yourself, promoting yourself with this, this eight by 10. And, and, you know, it, it, it's a sad state of affairs when you see some of the actors there again, competing at that high level, you know, we're all, we're all trying to qualify for, for the Olympics here. And it's a sad state of affairs when you, when you see the actor, get the the feedback from the casting director saying you probably need to go to another session and uh, with with a photographer and you should probably look at you know these types of roles because that's how i see you and they're honest hopefully they're not too blunt but they're honest with helping the actor better understand again that product and what they're selling and how to better go about doing it and they're typing workshops that you can do too to understand um and you know who you are how you're perceived and how to go about better selling that objective viewpoint yeah yeah and again i'm sorry go go ahead alan because like if you want to be ready for the next stranger things casting or the next you know whatever it is uh yeah you want to be ready to fit maybe the role that they're really looking for exactly and you want to be you you want to be able to promote yourself for it uh they 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 have very there's something that i refer to as type specific casting like if i if i'm looking at actors access or if i'm looking at uh casting network or any of the things where submissions are available and i see something like uh 50s doctor uh, and here's the character description and all that. Um, um, I am going to submit my, my suit and tie shot, you know, that, that shot that, that, that goes, can go back and forth between doctor, executive, um, uh, white collar. Science teacher and stranger it, it, things. It, it, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm going to, I'm going to submit that headshot. And I'm going to submit the, that, uh, you know, uh, 30 second to one minute, um, video, uh, uh, demo reel that represents me as that type of character, the, the, the doctor role, because you want to help those who are in the creative decision making, uh, uh, positions see you as closely to what they are looking at for this role that you're submitting for. So if you have that type specific headshot and you have that, that uh, representation of your work, that demo scene um, of that same type, that's just yeah. really tailoring the, the submission uh, as close 
to what they are looking for for that particular role as you can because mm -hmm. And back to back to uh, the transition of our our market. When we get, God willing, those Netflix uh, series that that uh, come to town, come to the market, um, or Amazon or Apple TV Plus, um, and they're looking for those types of roles. Uh, actors here ag again. That's that's upping your game, and that's understanding the the business side of it, and upping your game as the the craft side of it. Part of that part of that upping your game is understanding that when you submit for that doctor role, you're submitting against uh, or submitting into the same pool as actors in Chicago, actors in Seattle, actors in New Mexico, New York, right. Los Angeles, Texas. And they've got those doctor shots. They've got those doctor scenes. And they're going to stand out a whole lot more than an actor in, you know, a polo or a short sleeve button down who, you know, it may be a nice headshot and it may look like you and you've got a nice smile and you're you're pleasant and you're and you're selling you as an individual, as a as a as an approachable actor. But if you're not selling yourself in the same manner that, again, the person in the lane next to you, in the block, waiting for the gun to fire, um, if you're not competing at the same level, um, it's going to be difficult to uh, to cross the finish line or be in the in the in the first group of 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 actors to say to 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 impress the casting decision makers. Right quickly let's, to say let's this talk person about can do that this. Uh -huh. let's talk about the uh transition and getting to that point uh so we know that it will take obviously a hunger to get there in a drive but talk about like how we're doing that here in minnesota now with minnesota film alliance and uh your involvement with that and what are the goals this year for yeah what great, we're trying to accomplish great great question um yeah, so the Minnesota I'm a, I'm co-chair along with Melody Bahan of the Minnesota Film Alliance, uh, which is the 501c6 um, uh, nonprofit. Uh, the difference between say Minnesota Film and TV, which is a 501c3, versus Minnesota Film Alliance, which is a 501c6, is a 501c6 as structured can lobby, um, whereas a C3 can't. So it it is a it is a um, a uh it, think of it like a uh like a um a chamber of commerce in that it is an organization of partners that all have a shared interest and the shared interest for the minnesota film alliance is to see um uh that the state has a competitive um tax credit and that we have outside production uh, that we have a thriving production community within the state of Minnesota. And in the specific instance of the tax credit, we have uh, outside production coming to Minnesota to shoot their projects. We have a, we have a modest tax incentive. We were lucky enough to uh, uh, create some partnerships in, in, in the, in the Senate uh, and the house uh, last uh, session to, uh, to, you know, crack the door open. And, and get in with a modest um, incentive. And we have proven over the last year plus that um, we have a market for that. It's It's been what I've referred to as the proof of concept period. We have proven that producers want to come to the state and shoot. And we have proven that Minnesota-based corporations want to purchase the tax credits uh, for those uh, uh, those production companies who don't have a, a, a uh, who don't file taxes here, who, who don't have a tax uh, base here in, in Minnesota. Um, uh, so uh, we've proven it can work, but we need to make it better. We need to grow the incentive. So back to your question, our legislative goals for, for this session, which by the way, the session has begun. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about, you know, uh, what we need to do in regards to that. But the legislative goals for this session are to extend or eliminate the sunset. The sunset is basically that period of time that's baked into the the credit where uh, the legislators can come back and look at that and make the, the ter determination as to whether they want it to continue or not. And the, the, the dark side of that coin is they don't have to look at it again. They can just let it die. 
So what we want to do, what we have right now is a four-year uh, sunset. What we want to do is either extend or eliminate it. Be- and the benefit to that is episodic work. With a four-year sunset, uh, though, because of the timeline of not only films, but particularly episodic content, whether it's streaming or on a network, um, they've got longer timelines. And if, you know, if they, you know, when you, when, when you're an actor, just as an example, when you're an actor and you audition for a television series, when it comes down to the last, maybe three people who are going into the room before the executives, before all those, uh, uh, high paying, high paid individuals who are making the final decisions, you're presented with a three-year contract. Uh, uh, if you, and, and you sign it. (laughs) So if you, if you get cast, if you're one of the three that, you know, God touches that day, um, and, uh, you get the job, you have already signed your three year contract for that. So that just tells you that, um, that's one example that will tell you that these types of projects, episodic content, they're looking far into the future. So if they want to shoot, in another location other than, you know, Los Angeles or New York or whatever, um, they're, they are looking to states that have longer sunsets or no sunset at all. So we want to extend our sunset or eliminate it altogether. We also want to raise the cap. Currently, we have uh, uh, approximately $5 million per year. And uh, that, that's a, a available tax credits, five million in available tax credits. What we want to do is we want to raise that to 25 million per year to make it more competitive because that's going to bring in larger budget film projects. But once we get that sunset either extended or eliminated, that's going to open the doors to episodic content. So if we still have five million dollars as the cap, we're going to be the the films that come to Minnesota and the episodic content that come to Minnesota are going to be competing for the same amount of credits. So we we want to raise the the cap for for different reasons. We also want to establish a film commission because every state that has a tax credit, except Minnesota, has a film commission in place, an actual government agency that oversees uh, uh, projects that promotes the tax incentive and oversees the projects coming into town. Um, we are the only state uh, that does it with a 501 C three, which is, is, is ineffective. Um, it was set up for whatever reasons it was set up for in the beginning and it hasn't changed, but it is indeed ineffective because we have to, the, 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 the Minnesota film and TV has to continue to go to the legislature and say, give us money, please give us money to fund. And then they hold fundraisers to try to match that. And with a, fully funded um, state uh, agency that is overseen by the legislature and the governor um, uh, will be in a much better position to, to compete for these uh, for these projects. So we want to do that. Uh, And uh, if, if, and when that happens, that would change um, uh, Minnesota film and TV's uh, directives. But um, uh, until such time, Minnesota Film and TV is still doing its job. Um, uh, but our goal, again, is to, and, and may continue uh, existing in uh, support of uh, film and television projects in Minnesota to whatever degree um, uh, uh, is needed at that time. But our goal is to establish a film commission, uh, which, again, would make. Uh, the state more competitive. There are some language changes we want to make, uh, which is also a goal. And we also want to continue to uh, to fund and protect the the rebate program because that's a completely different program than the, the uh, it, what the rebate pro the rebate program is geared for projects that are different than what the tax incentive is geared for. The rebate program is geared for lower budget projects and it's geared for local projects. The tax and the tax credit is geared for outside production coming to the state. So we want to have, we want to have uh, healthy uh, uh, opportunities for both uh, homegrown local projects, local filmmakers, 
who have been here and are producing and are wanting to continue to produce, but also receive the benefits that the state of Minnesota makes available to them. But we also want to ring that dinner bell for outside production to say we are in business. And all of this is uh, all these legislative goals are for the purpose of being more competitive. You know, we're not looking at competing with Georgia, but maybe there are some lower budgeted projects that, um, that, have thought about Georgia, but the the uh, payroll companies who do consultations with them as far as where their where their dollars are best spent and where they can get a better return on tax incentives, these productions uh, uh, consult with these payroll companies and they say, well, you know what, Minnesota has this thing, and you know your locations really kind of could be perfect for Rochester or or central Minnesota or the Twin Cities or Duluth. And this might be a good option for you. But until we make these changes, um, we're not going to be as competitive as we can and should be. Um, so that's essentially what we're looking at doing. Uh, um, and there's a, you know, there's a, there's a whole lot of other things we could, well, let me, it's a lot. If you, if you don't mind, can I, can I tell people how they can find out more about the, yeah. the Alliance? Yeah. We've got a website. It's mnfilmalliance.org. Uh, so minfilmalliance.org. That's the website. Our Facebook is at minfilmalliance.org. Uh, we've also got Instagram, mn uh, underscore film underscore alliance. And we've also got a YouTube channel, Men Film Alliance. Um, uh, There's also you know, a link in filminminnesota.com slash connect. You oh, awesome. Thanks. Connect with the Film Alliance. And we're looking, um, one of the main goals is to, um, uh, this, what we've told you, I've mentioned the legislative goals, but as far as people who want to get involved in helping make this happen, um, what's really important right now that the session has started is uh, people need to understand, people need to know who their representatives are, um, uh, because, uh, nothing uh, representatives are very quick to respond to their constituents. Um, so to find out who your representative are, is, are, who they are, go to, you can go to www.gis.lcc.mn.gov forward slash imaps forward slash districts. You put your zip code in, that'll tell you who your reps are if you don't know already. Um, uh, over over time, uh, the, the the alliance is going to share with folks um, uh, information that they'll need to know who who they should reach out to, uh, you know, um, calls to actions, things like that, um, where we need people to start, you know, shaking the bushes, banging the drum, talking to their representatives, letting them know, you know, we'll provide talking points, letting them know um, uh, what needs to be said and who needs to be ra- reached out to. Um, but find out who your reps are. We, we are particularly interested in uh, if your reps, it, you should be interested in uh, knowing if your reps are on uh, the uh, four different committees that we're interested in, because that's where our legislation, that's where our bills are going to be uh, uh, taken up with, you know, House Tax Committee, House Economic Development, Finance and Policy. Senate Texas Committee, Senate Jobs and Economic Development Committee. That's where our, that's where those are the stoves our pots are going to be on. And those are the committee members that we are most interested in understanding the benefits of bringing outside production to the state of Minnesota. And if your legislators are on those tax committees, um, uh, woohoo to you. That is an awesome position to be in because you, they, you, you should have their ear and they should hear from their constituents, especially if, uh, 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 especially on these issues. uh, And if you're involved in this industry or have a stake in seeing that we, uh, that we have a healthy competitive, um, uh, tax credit here in Minnesota. Sounds like you have, um, just a ton of exciting things that, that you're really focused on, um, to help you know the community in general uh, across film, but then also actors. And so this is all really exciting to hear. Um, 
super appreciate you coming on and, and letting us just pick your brain and, uh, you know, find out all of this information. I know that this is, this is a ton of stuff that everyone here in the community really cares about and wants to know more about. So this is, we really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks. There's one word you said there. If I could just uh, say one more thing, there's one Mm -hmm. word that you said there that, that, that especially stands out to me, um, is the word community. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the twins, even in the 15, I hope I don't start to tear up, but even in the 15 years that I was in Los Angeles, every time I did a play in a dressing room, I would remember the times that I had in dressing rooms, working with, uh, twin cities, theater companies and and actors here. The, The entire time I was there, I was always thinking about the twin Cities. So it wasn't a surprise when we moved back because this community is so different from other places. Um, but where community particularly applies to some of the things we've been discussing, particularly the Minnesota Film Alliance, is that um, the Minnesota Film Alliance is not some people who are off talking to lobbyists and legislators. The Minnesota Film Alliance is anyone with uh, uh, a vested interest in seeing that we have um, a, a, a healthy, robust, competitive uh, tax incentive to in, to encourage outside production to come here. So whether you're uh, uh, somebody who is aspiring to be in the industry here, whether you're somebody who is who is struggling to it to be here, uh, you know, a member of crew, whether you your union or not, an actor, whether your union or not, if you want to see Minnesota succeed, if you want jobs. Uh, uh, in, in the episodic, you know, TV film industry to come to Minnesota. If you want those opportunities, um, you are a part of the community, and and quite frankly, you should be a part of the Minnesota Film Alliance. Um, what I like to tell people is, if you have an interest in seeing it happen, if you want it to succeed, you need to be a member of the alliance. Um, and from there, I would say, please go to the alliance website and please look at the opportunities of being becoming a member of the alliance and there are benefits to coming becoming a member of the alliance you'll you'll see those benefits and we're going to improve those benefits um uh uh because it, it it takes us it takes a special group to to make things like this happen and minnesota is a special community um, mm-hmm. So again, I would encourage everybody out there who 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 wants to see jobs come back to Minnesota and opportunities to come back to Minnesota that the film and television industry can bring. Please become a member of the Minnesota Film Alliance. Absolutely, everyone. Just press. Go ahead and press stop. We're just going to say bye, so it, it doesn't matter. Go ahead and press stop. Go to the website. Do the things. <laughs> um, and in the meantime, Casey, thank you again for for uh, hanging out with us today. Oh, Super appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you both. Thanks for having me. It's it's a great talk and uh um yeah, it was it was my pleasure to to be here. Thank you. Wonderful. Until next time to our listeners. This has been Film in Minnesota. Mm-hmm.